Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be a pretty, I don't wanna say if it's gonna be quick or not, but this is a common problem. This is probably the fourth or fifth Cummins third gen that has come into our shop with the same problem. They all say it's got a fueling issue. I'm gonna try and help you guys out on diagnosing these issues, just the, the way we do it at the shop. Um, this is a 2003 Dodge Ram 2500. It's got 340,000 miles. Um, number one, the batteries were dead, which is always exciting, right? Trying to jump it off. So I got it jumped. Um, first thing I noticed, white smoke, a little bit, but all in all, not bad. Let me take you in here. It is gonna be kind of loud because this truck is straight piped. Um, you don't need a snap-on scan tool to do this. Really just any tool that you can watch your set and actual rail so you guys can see there it's maintaining somewhat rail okay the next thing i always check is how much fuel's in it now this one has a quarter tank it's a little bit above a quarter tank we're gonna just let that ride because the customer said that it does it at all fuel level uh fuel level um heights i guess or settings or levels i guess i'm gonna back this thing up and then i always perform a inspection under the hood the only mods i've seen thus far on this truck is he has a boost filler from quadzilla which is fine this is actually an nv4500 truck so very very uh i don't, don't want to say rare but you don't see a lot of nv4500 uh third gens but we're gonna go drive it. And right now what we're trying to do is just confirm the concern. If you guys already know the concern, then we can skip this step. But this is all I do really on the, when it says it has a fueling issue, rail pressure is your best friend. So you guys can see there, we're a little low, but it bounces back quickly. But check this out. So again, I'm not really laying into this guy's truck. foot to the floor all right and then I let out and you guys hear that rail hang I'm off and it's hanging the rail like that so now we're gonna go through the different troubleshooting steps I would go through in a scenario like this it's actually quite simple uh, Step one, we are going to verify that we have a good fuel filter. I always start there. You'd be surprised how, <coughs> how many of these trucks <coughs> actually just have bad fuel filters. Uh, a lot of people, I don't know if they just forget or what, but uh, these older trucks don't have like a change fuel filter uh, light to them. So that's where I start. <coughs> Once I've verified that, you guys can hear it really dropping down to 2200 3000 a little hazy but um anyway once i do that the next thing i'm going to check is that we have the actual lip pump supplying fuel um these cp3s uh, are strong enough to create somewhat of a suction so to speak uh, especially under idle or light throttle and then once you go to um once you go to essentially apply a load throttle hill trailer whatever that's when you're going to notice like a weak lift pump so we're going to check that uh, assuming that is good and there are no issues with step one or two the next thing i'm going to do is plug the rail relief now you guys remember me talking about the relief valves i will put a test relief valve in the system uh, from there we will go drive it see if the problem still exists if it does from there, I'm going to do the connecting tube torque test. Uh, essentially, I'm going to loosen up the injection lines and check to make sure some of the uh, connecting tube nuts are tight. And then from there, what we will do is pull the injectors out and have them tested. Like I said here, here's under the hood, pretty much a bone stock truck. Um, 
dirty air filter, but that would not cause rail pressure to uh, bounce like that. <clears throat> and although the batteries are weak, again, it will not cause a bounce like that. We have the fuel filter out. Um, I will say quite dirty, but I really don't feel like this is the only problem or this might be part of the problem, but usually when they're starving that bad, they're like kind of sucked up and stuff. I get it, not the best, but now what I'm gonna do is I drain the fuel bowl out, which is right down here. And I'm gonna go ahead and crank the truck and just check to see how much that lift pump's actually flowing. It's really hard to get on camera, but um, I took the fuel filter out, it is dirty. However, it is not like to the point where it should have an issue. So I drained the fuel bowl. I tried to bump the lift pump with the um, fuel filter out and no matter how I did it, I even got it to run, um, it would not fill the bowl. So that tells me that we have a fuel supply problem. Now on these O3s, there's a fuel wire back there. Um, let me try to show you guys. It is, oh God bless. I don't know, you see this wire right here? The one that goes across this wire right here, plugs into the uh, factory truck or the ECM harness comes up here to this relay right here. This is a relay for a lift pump. I'm assuming this one might've gotten retrofitted at some point. Um, so then I'm, you know, just poking around, poking around. Uh, yeah, this is a power wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this stripped and just check to see if this will power the lift pump. And I know it's very hard to hear, but this customer actually has a fuel pressure gauge. Look at that guys, we have fuel pressure. So now this, this made it a lot easier. So I apologize for you guys trying to do it at home. Let's give it a shot. Probably a little bit of air still in there. I ran it with it very empty. Let's try it now. Let's give it a break. Let me put it on the jump pack. All right, so we got our jump pack all hooked up now. I apologize for all of this, but let's see what she does now. Lift pump's a lot stronger. I can hear it. Let's give it a shot. We'll give it a, we'll give it a break here. All right, jump pack hooked up. Let's see what she does now. Two jump packs. That'll do it. Let me get our scan tool hooked back up. Now we are on the test drive <coughs> real quick. It's already looking a lot better. We're holding rail pressure. Let me try to get you guys zoomed in a little better. Holding real pressure here. Again, I just have this kind of temporarily wired up just to make sure that that was in fact the problem. Uh, the set points on bottom. This will really be the test right here. driving a customer's truck because you just never know what a third gen suspension has in store for you you know what i'm saying but the good news is uh the lift pump pressure will watch now make sure it's staying solid uh might be a little hard for you guys to see so i'll update you once i'm done with this test drive here's the lift pump pressure i'm gonna just rev it in neutral notice how the rail hangs gone now too now this is no load. So uh, when I floored it uh, in fourth gear, um, it dropped to about 12 PSI, which is still considered good for factory. Um, little concerning about the battery voltage 
uh, situation just with the batteries being so low. So, yep, there you go. Very, very good times there. But, uh, yeah. All right, so pardon the noise, but we have the check gauges light come on. Okay, we got low battery voltage. We come over here. This battery is only showing 11.3. I come up here to the crossover cable. 16 volts. So I tested it over there. We got 16 volts. So I think what we're going to have to do is we'll try to clean up this terminal a little bit. But well, guys, just like that, got the terminal cleaned up. Boom. Let's go inside. Boom. That is the end of it. We put a new terminal on that, cleaned his battery connections, tightened it all up. Um, I'm gonna call the customer, see if he wants me to throw a fuel filter in there just because of how dirty it was. Um, however, I mean, it's as simple as that. Um, I've seen people with simple problems like fuel filters and stuff like this that end up buying injectors and chasing this problem. So. I hope, although this one was very easy, I'll give you that, it's a broken wire. Um, sometimes the easy stuff trips people up. Um, and that's why like when I troubleshoot a lot of issues like this, I go to the basics, right? So first thing we did, we made sure we had fuel in the truck, okay? Um, a lot of times, if it's a below a quarter tank, I'll just go run to the fuel station, throw five gallons in it. Nobody is gonna complain on a bill if I put five gallons of diesel fuel in if your truck's running bad. Um, so that's step one, make sure there's fuel in the tank. Step two, check the filters. And that can be the stock filters. It could be an air dog, a fast, whatever. Check the filters like we did. That one, dirty, but not plugged, okay? Um, step three, we checked for lift pump pressure. Now, me being stupid, I missed that fuel pressure gauge. So I did it the hard way, which is left the filter off, drain the bowl, crank the truck, the bowl never filled back up. Now that isn't gonna verify if you have the correct pressure, but it's gonna make sure the lift pump's toggling on. Now from there, um, we noticed that the fuel bowl wasn't filling up. So I went ahead and started following the wires. On this truck, it has a um, fuel pressure or a, a lift pump plug there. Followed that up to that relay, followed the relay wire, broken. Um, so it was an easy fix. Put that on. We're going to probably end up changing his fuel filters, send that customer on the road. Uh, not a very big bill. I don't have a ton of time in it. Um, but again, basics. Now, let's say the lift pump did work and we had good pressure. From there, I would unplug the FCA, make sure the rail pressure could max out. Um, that's another way to check the relief valve in a way. It's not ideal, but it can be done. Um, depending on the results there, if it didn't maintain rail pressure, um, from there, what I would do is then put that relief uh, plug in there, check it. Uh, if it did hold, awesome. We'll get them a new relief valve. If it doesn't hold, from there, I'm going to check connecting tubes. Like I said, um, what I normally do to check this is I just put a, uh, I crack the injection lines just loose a little bit, put a wrench on there, see if they're tight or not. Um, if I have some loose ones, what I do from there is I will crack the uh, two bolts that hold the injection uh, injector down. Uh, I'll crack those loose. I will torque the connecting tube uh, to 11 foot pounds. From there, I will retorque the two bolts to 89 inch pounds and then give it that 44 foot pounds of torque. Now, if that solves all the issues, awesome. Connecting tubes come loose all the time. I've seen it, done it, it happens. Uh, from there, if we still have an issue, uh, I'm going to go ahead and send those injectors off, pull them out, send them off, um, get them tested, or just tell the customer, Hey, like we've narrowed it down to it's your injectors or your CP3 pump. Um, the CP3 pump really to test it, like as long as it's trying to make rail pressure, um, we're going to, we're going to call that decent for now. Okay. Um, obviously I get it. CP3s can fail. However, they tend to have a little different symptoms than like injectors. Again, we had low rail pressure. Um, we had the white smoke. We had the hard start. We had the surging throttle, low power. Um, all those things would point to an injector. But again, we stick to the basics. 
Um, hopefully this helps you. I really, guys, I thought this one was gonna be one of those where we had to take it really far and do all the tests. So I apologize that that was not this one, but we covered the steps. I showed you the practical application of it and boom, just like that, we're gonna get a customer fixed for a fraction of the cost of a new set of injectors and uh, hopefully we earn his business. Hopefully you guys like this one. Drop a comment down below. Subscribe if you are not already, guys. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.